shepherd, I shall not want. Dijanadon in the Buena, Kawi Kiyadagedu Mandarinjin. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He shall go to the Buena, Kenegu Piok, Tanishaweba. He leadeth me beside still waters. He will enishush it, Keni Enishaya. He restoreth my soul, he leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Mshkoatsewin meaneth, Kenegu Kwatsewin. Kailing dash tishni kasi. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Ishpingo gave him new to the woman, Kadego and Kaktanzi. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Longer do I to show any, and go away with me to me and among every and none. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Gigishi Tausiro Mantan Tamatu, Gigisha Pushyan Patazuni. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Kinege Boga Mishin, Mushknesh Kavan. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Kishpin Ansa, Kisha Shoen me. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Kagin Tamasuin Kamish. Deep breath. Good morning. 
It's a rainy 45 degree day here at Green Sky Hill, and I'm missing you. Uh, the sanctuary is warm and cozy, even with the door open and the window open, so our Wi-Fi signal works better. Um, right now the parking lot's empty, so if you want to come and join us for our parking lot service, uh, you're invited to do that. Uh, you have time uh, to get here uh, before I leave, about uh, 10 to 11 or so. Uh, and we have uh, free food boxes available. Um, we've got uh, uh, family food boxes uh, through our partnership with Mana Food Project, and uh, we'd love to share those with you, whether you are um, directly connected uh, through membership at Green Sky Hill or one of our many constituents, or just a friend or a neighbor who's hungry, uh, or you know someone who is. Uh, so we have no strings attached uh, food boxes available. We also have uh, uh, five packs of cotton masks, uh, lots of them. If you want to share them with your family and neighbors, uh, please let me know and I can get them to you. And uh, also with the food boxes, if you know someone who's hungry, um, I'd be happy to deliver those uh, when uh, I have an open window during the week, so please let me know. And um, we also have now uh, monthly uh, worship at home packets, and it's a, just a collection of uh, documents connected with what we're doing here uh, in the sanctuary and on Facebook Live on Sunday morning for those who can't uh, connect um, virtually. So please let me know if you need that or if someone else knows, uh, you know, needs that. The pattern now will be to pass those out uh, on the first Sunday of the month uh, during drive-in communion. And so you can look forward to that too. Um, if you're not able to join us in the parking lot, we'll still do the uh, uh, love feast, the agape feast with bread and water for those who are not able to be here uh, physically for uh, the sharing of communion. Well, we've met that we might worship, and I'm, I'm ready to worship with you. I'm glad that we can take a breath together, uh, take a Sabbath from politics and pandemics, and recenter, remembering that uh, we are not individually the center of the universe. But the one who is loves us and wants to be with us. And so this morning, uh, I'm going to ask for your permission to call you Moses. And uh, Sarah should be here for a children's message uh, around the same story in the book of Exodus. I'm going to ring the bell and invite you to light a candle at home as I light a candle, our, our altar candles and our Christ candle uh, here at the sanctuary. I did see when I was coming in this morning to get things set up, uh, a re request from, for prayer by Robin Lees. Robin, I, I didn't see what it is specifically uh, that you're asking for prayer for, um, but you have our prayers, and those who are following online can see your comment about uh, specifically what that is. And I'm glad to know that uh, Gajemna Do knows, and we'll, uh, we'll lift that up uh, for you this morning. Uh, and for all others, as we... Uh, share silent prayer in just a few minutes and other other forms of prayer so let's ring the bell and get started in worship uh, if you're on your way and uh, uh, listening on facebook live uh, there are uh, worship packets for this morning's service for those who want to listen in the parking lot on 106.9 fm i hope alice jeff uh, alice harvey is uh, listening down the hill on her own radio because i think she can hear it uh, uh, since she's so close to the church and you are welcome. So glad that you're here with us. Let's ring the bell.
You'll see several announcements in your uh, worship order of service this morning on Facebook Live, including uh, the drive-in resources that I just shared with you. Uh, we do have a Zoom coffee hour at 11 o'clock, and there's an invitation in the order of service, and that will be uh, distributed again on our Facebook group page. You just should be able to click on it and join that uh, Zoom coffee hour between a quarter to 11 and 11, and we go to about noon. We try to end at 11.57. Uh, 21st of October is Imagine a Day Without Water, and there's a link there uh, for that resource that Janan Cornstalk shared with us. And uh, we do have a council meeting on the first Thursday of the month. Uh, that's uh, the 5th of November. But we'll be doing that via Zoom. And um, this morning's service, along with uh, past services, uh, will be available at our website, greenskyhill.org. Let us pray. Namada. When Israel was in Egypt land, let my people go. Pressed so hard they could not stand, let my people go. Yes, the Lord said, go down, Moses, way down in the Egypt land, tell old Pharaoh to let my people go. You'll find a link to a beautiful animated video uh, with the singing of Louis Armstrong and that uh, traditional African-American spiritual leading into this anti-racism racism prayer for this morning. Is there a voice in the burning, Lord? The forests are on fire. The cities are burning. Though much is consumed in the blaze, might we hear a voice if we listen? Might we hear the cry of a planet pleading to be released from bondage? The voice of the people crying to be set free. To be set free from oppression. Have we forgotten that we stand on holy ground? Have we forgotten that all your children are precious in your sight and that injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere? How can we pass by the conflagration and not turn aside? O Lord of our fathers and mothers, of our sisters and brothers, let us turn aside, aside from our own agendas, aside from our self-centered existence, Aside from our consumer mentality, let us turn aside and listen to the burning. With tears that match your tears, with broken hearts that match your broken heart, let us turn aside so that we might hear the call, the call to go down, down to where the fire burns hottest, down to where the people are being burned, down to where the need is greatest, let us go down, we Moseses in training, and set your people free. Set our world free. Set ourselves free from the hate that burns us, the division that consumes us. Send us down, Lord, once more. Is there a voice in the burning? May we turn aside with ears to hear. Amen. Many thanks to Derek Weber, the uh, Director of uh, Preaching Ministries in the United Methodist Church and the United Methodist Discipleship Ministries, um, from whom we get so many of our resources for our gatherings. Our opening hymn continues our prayer this morning, Abide with me. Fast falls the even tide. The darkest deepens, the darkness deepens. Lord, with me abide. When other helpers fail and comforts flee, help of the helpless, oh, abide with me. Will you sing that with me? Abide with me. Fast falls the even tide. The darkness deepens, Lord, with me abide. When other helpers fail and comforts free, help of the helpless soul abide with me. 
swift to its close, ebbs out life's and little day. Earth's joys grow dim, its glories pass away. Change and decay in all around I see. Oh, Thou who changest not, abide with me. I need Thy presence every passing sing the second and third verses again. Um, in light of this dark fall day, a day when we feel the world getting darker around us and we sense the changes and the decay of autumn, this prayer is stay with me, abide with me, pitch your wigwam among us again, O Lord. Swift to his close ebbs out life's little day. Earth's joys grow dim, its glories pass away. Change and decay in all around I see. Oh, changed it to the cares of the world because the earth is not the problem. 
earth was created in God's own creativity as we were created in God's image. And there's beauty around us. And we see in the seasons, in the falling of the leaves, uh, the ground is covered with leaves here at Green Sky Hill right now. There's still many on the trees, but they're falling. And we know because we have learned to watch the indicators in the sky that this is a season to remind us of uh, the change from old life to new. Uh, the death of something that needs to die to give life to something else. And so even in death, we can abide in Christ, abide with our Creator, live with our Creator, knowing uh, that the darkness is temporary and the morning is coming. So we're praying this morning along with the things uh, that some of you have already indicated um, online um, that I won't see till later, but as we've talked about before, um, God's not bound by time and space in the same way that we are. So it's fine if I join you in those specific prayers later and others can join you now as you share them. But I'm going to light candles for each of our prayers and for those whom we're praying for and thinking of. I became aware yesterday that a uh, traditional healer uh, walked on Blanking on his name, unfortunately, but um, he's a, a Canadian brother who many local Anishinaabe people have been blessed by, and he's on his journey right now. And so we offer Simla and prayers for him and for all those on that journey. And uh, let us continue in prayer with uh, silent prayer as Matt uh, Kuntz uh, plays for us. The Lord's Prayer. Nusnan spinning ein. Manu dat chitoyen gade dishne khas. Dugmao in de bushtung dat anen man de shoabat ama king. De bishko go de spin. Mi shanam sunungi shok gen jam. Gye aboen shanam nun bataj. Je hebt ze in aan. Er is een aboe en maar door een 
continue talking about Moses this morning is where our passage comes from and um, we are starting in Exodus chapter 33 verses 12 through 23 and I am going to go ahead and read this this morning because I want us to be able to get the context and then we're going to talk about just kind of one section of that that's really important for this Sunday Moses said to the Lord you have been telling me lead these people but you haven't let me know whom you will send with me you have said I know your name, I know all about you, and I'm pleased with you. If you are pleased with me, teach me more about yourself, then I can know you, and I can continue to please you. Remember that this nation is your people. The Lord replied, I will go with you, and I will give you rest. Then Moses said to him, If you don't go with us, don't send us from, up from here. How will anyone know that you are pleased with me and your people? You must go with us. How else will we be different from all the other people on the face of the earth? The Lord said to Moses, I will do exactly what you have asked. I am pleased with you, and I know your name. I know all about you. Then Moses said, Now show me your glory. The Lord said, I will make all my goodness pass in front of you, and I will announce my name, the Lord, in front of you. The Lord said, I will make all my goodness pass in front of you, and I will announce 
pronounce my name, the Lord, in front of you. I will have mercy on whom I have mercy, and I will show love to those I love. But you can't see my face, he said. No one can see me and stay alive. The Lord continued, There is a place near me where you can stand on a rock. When my glory passes by, I will put you in an opening in the rock. I will cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will remove my hand. You will see my back, but my face must not be seen. Well, this morning is Lady Sunday, and it's a time to celebrate that all of us are a church. And it's a time to share how all the people live their lives in following Jesus and how we do that with each other. And part of being a part of a church is to serve together and to serve God. And God speaks and calls to each of us in different ways. And it's a day that we might think about how we could serve more passionately or we could serve differently. And we can really kind of reflect and take a look at some of the things that we do really well. Um, who here and you can raise your hand at home, or you can just smile in acknowledgement, has ever had a security blanket or a stuffed animal. I almost brought my stuffed animal, my bear, and his name is Benjamin, and I think I've talked about him before. But we all have a stuffed animal or a blanket or a lovey or something special that we've had since we were little, and, and it's just kind of something that we can hold and, and smell and just have that security and that comfort. And um, some of us parents, may remember a little better than the kids the, these um, days that in Charlie Brown, Linus always had his blanket and he was always dragging it along with them everywhere he went and he had his blanket and that was his security. And it reminded him that he felt safe and that's the same thing that, that we do with our security blankets and lovies and things. And, you know, in some, in some ways, God is that same way for us. You know, we know that he's with us. We know that he's all around us. We know that he is here on earth and he's in heaven. And there's times in our lives when we just need comfort. We just need somebody to hold us and say, I'm right here. You're not alone. And God is that for us. And, you know, God challenges us to do more than what we even realize and think that we can do. And sometimes God speaks to us and he gives us a challenge and he gives us some guidance and direction. And a lot of times people say that God is calling us. Now, God is certainly not calling us, and we're, oh, you yeah, know, yeah, God's calling, i got to take this, I better not send him to voicemail, right? He's not going to call us on the phone. It's not just going to be in words. It's going to be a calling in, in our actions, and the way that we answer is how we live our life. So when God is calling us, and we feel this urge to be able to answer God and to do something for somebody and to live in a way that God has asked us to live, we're answering God's calling. And it can look different for lots of people. Maybe Pastor Jonathan's calling was to be a pastor. And um, my calling may be, have, you know, to be a Sunday school teacher. And, you know, there are people that are like, oh, well, I don't know what my calling is. It's really hard to figure out. But I know that I have these talents and things that I'm good at. And so maybe somebody who is a great cook can put on a nice dinner for the church and, and maybe do a fundraiser and raise some money to be able to provide for those who may not have those things. And, um, you know, you may have somebody that's just really good at building and they can help to build things up and take care of things and fix things around our church. And, you know, as kids, there's a lot of things that we can still do that, you know, you don't have to be an adult. And you don't have to have some big calling to still be answering God's call in your life. And there are some little ways, and I say little, but they're just equally as important. There are ways that you can answer God's call as well. And it may be something as simple as, as sharing your lunch with a friend who's in need. Or it may be something as simple as starting a club at school, after school, um, you know, for people that are in need. And there's just a lot of different ways that you could answer God's call. And, you know, he's always calling us and always kind of pushing us to be outside of our comfort zone. And just know that even though we may feel like we, we can't do these things and we need that comfort, know that God is our comfort. He's our security blanket. He's never going to leave us. He's always with us. And we can do anything as long as we can do it with Christ. And remember when we were reading in our um, passage this morning, in verse 17, the Lord says, I'm pleased with you, and I know your name, and I know all about you. God knows us intimately. He knows us inside our hearts even better than we know ourselves. So don't forget that this isn't just, this isn't just anybody else or a new person that you meet. This is God who knows us just like our parents know us, just even like we know ourselves. This is God who we can put our trust and our love and our comfort in. So let's pray. Here I am, God. I know 
that you're calling me to love you and to serve you, no matter what my age. Help me to hear your call and to find ways of service and love so that I can hear your call and, and I can do things that feel right to me and that I can have a good understanding of how I can serve you better. In Jesus' name, amen. extra precautions. If you've uh, been following our Facebook uh, communication, then you saw that Kathy and I uh, were tested uh, twice <laughs> in the last uh, week and a half uh, for COVID-19. Um, we had some symptoms and we uh, had very limited exposure because we've been extra careful with Kathy's uh, health um, uh, conditions and, and uh, concerns. Um, and thankfully, uh, both tests, uh, the, the rapid test and the, the regular deep swab test came back negative. And uh, at, as of the time of testing, uh, thanks be to God, we don't have COVID-19. Um, it's still a big concern, which is why we're still doing this, and we're still going to be doing this uh, for a while, brothers and sisters, as much as we want to gather together physically. Uh, the latest studies are showing a big concern for the fall and winter, especially the holiday seasons and small gatherings. So the latest uh, data is showing us that we have to continue to be diligent uh, to protect one another, to love our neighbors by... Um, being careful not to share exposure, um, even if we don't feel sick. You know, the obvious things, staying home uh, if you feel sick, uh, taking your temperature um, if you feel sick, um, if you have symptoms, uh, getting tested. Uh, when there are free testing opportunities, as there have been recently, uh, take advantage of those even if you don't feel sick, because collecting that data helps uh, those who are fighting this pandemic to fight it more effectively, uh, to listen to the science, and to be kind. To Even if you don't really get um, why people are wearing masks, or if, if you think it's uh, some kind of a challenge to your personal freedom, just love your neighbor as yourself, and do as you would like for them to do to you, or as we heard recently, um, be sure not to do to others what you would not want them to do to you, <laughs> uh, to be inconsiderate or unkind. And wear your mask whenever you have to be out in public. Uh, wash your hands, don't touch your face, all those things that we've learned. Uh, we're going to need to continue to do those for a while. I'm so thankful for Sarah Schaefer and uh, her uh, willingness to continue serving our families. And um, she brought us into our scripture text uh, in uh, Exodus uh, chapter 33, uh, verses 12 to 23. And um, I'm actually going to add a little bit of, of uh, scripture reading to help us make sense of why I want to call you Moses this morning. I'm hoping for your permission to uh, think of you as Moses as we began our, our morning prayers together, reminding us that we are all uh, Moseses in training. This crazy, beautiful, wonderful story uh, in the book of Exodus is something for us to uh, focus on, to celebrate, to think about, and we're going to do that together right after we share our morning offering. As forgiven and reconciled people, let us offer ourselves and our gifts to God. The 
unless you're driving uh, or someplace where it doesn't work, if you can stand up right now, I invite you to do that and to sing with me our doxology in the Mishnah. One of the articles that I'm going to share uh, with us uh, together this morning is uh, from Shelley Douglas. Uh, Shelley, uh, at the time of writing about this uh, story in Genesis, uh, was a uh, contributing editor to Sojourners magazine, and she worked at Mary's House, a Catholic worker community in Birmingham, Alabama. And she wrote an article called God's Hindquarters, and I'm going to share that a brief article with you because I found the same humor in this story that she did. And it's, it's a humbling that we can't um, handle the truth. Remember that classic um, courtroom documentary and the uh, oft-screened line, you can't handle the truth! <laughs> well, we can't, it turns out. If we were to see the face of God, it would be so way too much for us. It would, it would, I think, I picture one of the scenes from the classic action film Raiders of the Lost Ark when the Nazis opened up the Ark of the Covenant and their faces melted off. <laughs> I don't know that that's exactly what would happen, but it would be beyond, it is beyond our human experience on this side of our journey to see the face of God until Jesus came. And one of the commentaries that I read this week noted that even the face of Jesus is not described in the New Testament. And we have images about the Messiah. There's some places uh, in the prophecy from Isaiah that are uh, used to um, give us some idea of what Jesus physically looked like. Some say he was ruddy, never been really clear on what that word means. I think, I think red-cheeked. Uh, he was not physically attractive according to contemporary standards, if you apply that prophecy to him. But the commentator noted that we don't have a um, detailed description of Jesus, and as a result, every culture everywhere, when they think of Jesus, Think of him like that Christmas carol. Some children see him, bronzed and brown. Whatever the color of your people or your own skin, you see Jesus that way and rightly so. What we experienced in Jesus when God came into our human space, built the wigwam among us that we are so close to celebrating in the season of Advent, believe it or not, as we are in the middle of October already. 
When God built a tent, pitched a tent, built a wigwam among us to live with us, we got to see the full nature of God in human form. And Moses was already experiencing his relationship with God as if with a friend. Earlier in this story, which is beautiful, amazing, scary, and sometimes downright evil in what people did in God's name. We learn a lot about the character of God. And when I ask, may I call you Moses this morning, it's because of that beautiful verse 17. I will do the very thing you have asked, the Creator responded to Moses, because I am pleased with you, and I know you by name. Now, the rest of the story that she shared is God kind of bargaining with uh, Moses. Moses bargaining with God the way friends would, the way family would. You know, you said you were going to do this thing, and, and I haven't experienced it yet. When are you going to take care of it? And God responding to Moses as to a friend. This Sunday, the 20th Sunday after Pentecost in the church calendar, is Laity Sunday. The third Sunday of October in the United Methodist Church is the day we celebrate you. Not just the ordained ministers who wear special garments to, to remind us of the priestly ministry of Christ and the pastoral ministry of Christ among us. Not as a hierarchy, but as a unique calling, the way Sarah talked about this morning. Moses, you're being called to do something Beyond your own capability also. <laughs> Moses, you've asked God to help you with that next step. And you've asked especially for a helper. And you haven't figured out who that is yet. And so you've had this conversation with God. When I read this story this morning, uh, Kathy, as usual, was helping me think of music for today. And she reminded me of the beautiful Alicia Keys song written for this moment in history called Good Job. I shared the video on our Facebook page, and I hope you've had a chance to see that. Whether you are homeschooling your kids as an unwitting homeschool teacher, not um, incapable, but not your plan, not necessarily your call. Not many parents are certified teachers who planned on educating their children at home, and yet women especially have been burdened beyond uh, most of the men in this culture because they still have the largest weight of uh, maintaining the home, the physical uh, housekeeping uh, tasks, and the child um, raising tasks, because that's still the way our culture works, even though it's not right or fair or just. And it's changing. But women have experienced an extra burden, working that job and coming home to have to still take care of all of the same responsibilities at home, and now the burden of homeschooling. Many dads, uh, including in our own family, my son-in-law David Moser and, and my son-in-law uh, Amos Mor uh, Arenda, uh, partners to two of our daughters, are sharing the education ex uh, burden with uh, their wives, um, splitting the day in both jobs and home education. And it's hard, and people are tired and overwhelmed. And our essential workers, those people that we still depend on every day to, to uh, pull our online orders off of the shelf and make sure it gets to our home to, to do our grocery shopping for us if we're still ordering online. The ones who still have to show up and stock the stores and the, the small business owners who've been so hard hit by this pandemic. Alicia Keys speaks to you, I believe, as a prophet with the voice of God, good job. Good job. Good job. You can do this. And in that song, I hear the Lord speaking to Moses, and therefore, as I call you, Moses, with your permission this morning, 
I want you to hear the creator of all things speaking to you. I will do the very thing you've asked because I am pleased with you and I know you by name. And then the text and the whole book of Exodus gives us the most amazing gift of all. Not necessarily the, the full uh, uh, experience of seeing God face to face because that's too much for us. But the, hum the humbling, not humiliating, really different. God doesn't shame us. God just reminds us that we are not the center of all things. For our own benefit, so that we can love ourselves the way God loves us and knows us and is pleased with us. So that we can love our neighbors as ourselves. And God lets us see only God's hindquarters. Just this little glimpse, because the rest is too much. In Exodus 34, the next uh, section of this story, we hear, The Lord descended in the cloud and stood with Moses there and proclaimed the name, the Lord. Now we only have it because it's uh, a Hebrew um, spelling without vowels, and it's been translated Yahweh, Jehovah, uh, for people who think it's okay to speak the name, and, the, and our Hebrew brothers and sisters, our Jewish brothers and sisters, still don't even speak the uh, phonetic spelling of the name. For us, we know that Moses first encountered God in the third chapter of this book of Exodus, and God, when asked, who are you, said, I am who I am. I am. And it really is the, the English verb to be, is, will be, was, or in Hebrew, haya, to be. It's connected with the verb, verb that means to exist. And knowing that, that the name of our God is the one who was here before European contact with indigenous people before some religion came and tried to teach people about the Creator, people lived in the presence of I Am. When Jesus came and He was challenged, and, and in our Gospel text this morning, if you read in the lectionary readings, you'll find that this is the last week of Jesus' life in that Gospel of Matthew, um, leading in to what we will celebrate in the spring and the Lenten story uh, of His uh, false trial and his assassination, his execution at the hands of an empire. In that moment, Jesus still reminded us that he is one with the one who is, with I am, by uh, speaking his own I am statements. But I love the rest of what we hear about the name of God. Who is this creator that we worship? The Lord passed before Moses and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord, a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness, keeping steadfast love to the thousandth generation. Our Anishinaabe people think of seven generations. God extended that with the exaggeration of a thousand generations. In other, way, in other words, forever. Forever. forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, yet by no means clearing the guilty, and we think this is, we find this to be equally important, that people, including ourselves, have consequences for our choices and actions. By no means clearing the guilty, but visiting the iniquity of the, of the parents upon the children and the children's children to the third and fourth generation. That's a whole other sermon. Let me just conclude my thoughts on that part of the name, the identity, the one who knows us and the one who named you by saying, did you catch the, the imagery and the differences of the number of generations? The consequences of our decisions now are going to affect our children's children, we know, to seven generations. God uh, said to the third and fourth generation. The, the forgiveness, the steadfast love is extended to the thousandth generation. That is the character of our forgiving God. 
Parker Palmer, in his classic book, To Know As We Are Known, it's a book about education as a spiritual journey, talked about this humility that we experience as little Moseses who only see the hindquarters of God. And uh, Parker Palmer describes this, Humility enables us to hear the truth of others in creative tension with the faith that empowers us to speak our own truth. This humility that God reminded us of by placing us with Moses in the cleft of a rock in a safe space when life is so difficult around us. God put us in a cleft covered our face with God's own hand and passed by, allowing us to see only God's hindquarters. And Shelley Douglas wrote this. This Exodus reading is one of my favorites, she said. Moses' presumption, God's patience, God's humor, God's care and gentleness. What kind of wild glory is this that to look upon it directly is to die? What kind of wild, glorious, funny God would think of sidling by with only God's hindquarters exposed so that Moses could see God's glory and not die? How could we possibly hope to understand such a being, to capture God's image, to confine God in rules? Who could we possibly, what could we possibly do except to laugh? to rejoice, to adore this totally foreign and amazingly intimate lover of humankind. If we contemplate even God's hindquarters, I think we can learn to honor that unknowable one and in doing so, to live so that without God, our lives make no sense. Then we'll know where praise and worship are due and render our hearts and our money to the right ruler, a reference to the gospel story this morning when Jesus was asked, should we pay taxes? <laughs> and he pulled out, he had the religious leaders pull out a coin reminding the world in the temple that even they were in passive, at least, if not active complicity with the empires of this world where a Caesar was imprinted on a coin and identified as the Son of God. And Jesus reminded us that that's not who we worship. And God reminded Moses, I know you by name. I'm pleased with you. And God names us. God identifies us because we were created in God's image with the same names that God takes on God's self and changes our name as well. This is a favorite at Green Sky Hill. So many of you know it already. The words are printed uh, in your order of service. I invite you to sing it with me if you have the words or just listen if you need to hear about your own name. I will change your name. You shall no longer be called wounded, outcast, lonely, or afraid. I 
go down and set the people free. Our closing hymn this morning, I'm going to say for next week. We'll do it as our opening hymn uh, next Sunday. Uh, Here I am, Lord. Uh, it's 11 o'clock. I want to invite you to fellowship in our Zoom coffee hour. The link is on our group page or on our face uh, in this order of service. And I'll be there in a few minutes. You have a new name. God knows that name. God gave it to you. Your identity is in the one who made you, in whom we live and move and have our being. Go in peace to love and serve as Jesus loves and serves. Moses, see you soon. I love you.